Hello students, our topic for today is Porter's value chain. So this is another framework that is very widely used by organizations. So Porter's value chain denoted through PVC. The reason we use this framework is to improve the efficiency of processes within the organization. Now why do companies look at improving the efficiency of processes? One, they make the processes simpler. And second, they are able to drive the cost lower through effi increased efficiency within the processes. Now, organizations can apply these models to any process that they have within the organization, but let's first understand what the framework actually talks about. So, the framework is basically divided into two parts, the primary activities and second is the support activities. Now, primary activities denoted by PA, support activities SA. Now, primary activities basically covers the length of the entire production process. So, raw material enter the premises of a company and are then processed, converted and sold in the form of a finished good. The primary activity actually has five sub-elements to it. IL stands for inbound logistics, OPS stands for operations, OL is outbound logistics, marketing and sales and after sales service. Now inbound logistics is the stage wherein the raw material from the supplier enter the premises of the company. So that is where the goods enter. Operation is when I pick up the raw material and I start manufacturing them or converting them into the finished product. Now this finished product is what will get sold when we will reach out to our customers. So inbound logistics, the goods come in, they get converted into the finished product and then through outbound logistics, they are shipped or transited to the source of sale. It could be a wholesaler to the godown of the wholesaler, it could be the customer or it could be the retailer through which the goods will then be sold to the customer. Now while all these processes are happening which is converting raw material into a finished good, the marketing and sales team is also trying to market the product, develop the demand for the product. So whenever the goods reach the place of sale, customers because of their awareness will be able to buy the product. So buying a product in terms translate into sales for the organization. Now the last step is whenever any product is manufactured and it reaches the customer, customers will need after sales services. It will depend upon different kinds of products. So primarily this is the end to end chain for our primary activity. From raw material to finished good to selling of the good and to providing after sales service. Now every step in the primary activity has certain sub steps. It may be possible that each of these sub steps may be required or each of these sub steps may not be required. So the idea behind using the Porter's value chain is to develop an understanding of the sub steps within each of these processes and validate whether they are required or not. If they are not required, we need to ensure that we eliminate or reduce which will then make our processes simpler and help us in improving cost. So I will come to that in a bit through examples, but let's understand the support activities. Now every organization has different support activities. Primarily the model talks about four support activities. So one is the HR which is human resources, procurement, infrastructure and technology. Now these four steps enable the completion of the primary activities because these are at the back end, these are at the front end and back end plus front end drives an organization. So once the primary activities have been understood and the supporting activities have been understood, now is the time when the company will start to make use of the Porter's value chain in terms of the actual and practical implementation. Now let's look at the steps in terms of how do we do a Porter's value chain analysis and how does the company benefit from it. Now the first step is develop an understanding of every process. When I say every process, I am talking about every sub process within the primary activities and the support activities. Now let's understand with the help of an example. IL stands for inbound logistics. So let's say I have a supplier X, I am a company Y. Supplier X sends goods to me which are as per the demand or the purchase acquisition that I would have raised. Now when the goods reach my company premises, my quality inspection team will go and inspect the goods that I have received from the supplier. Now it may be a likelihood that all 100% goods are good to be used in the production process. It may be a likelihood that 10, 15, 20% of the goods are not worthy of being used in the production process. So step one was I received the goods, 
Step two, I do a quality inspection. Step three, whatever goods are not up to the quality standards are sent back to the supplier. Step number four, the supplier will then reship the goods to ensure that they are able to meet the quality standards. So when I start using Porter's value chain, I need to develop a comprehensive understanding of each and every process in detail. Why do I need to do it? The second step gives me the answer to my question. Identify the non-value added activities. Now, if I look at my inbound logistics, I was getting input from the supplier. I was doing a quality inspection. I was sending back the goods which were not appropriate and then they were being shipped back to my organization. So four steps, but do I have a guarantee that all four steps are required? Can I do away with the quality inspection? Yes, I could do that because if I say that I will certify my supplier to provide goods, then I don't have to do a quality inspection. If they or maybe I will be able to minimize the amount of inspection that I do. Minimization of the amount of inspection that I do will help me reduce my cost. And when I reduce my cost, I will be able to increase my margins. So develop an understanding of every process from inbound logistics to after sales services for HR to technology. Identify non-value added activities for every element of the primary activity, every element of the support activity. I will come to a complication a little later. Now once you identify the non-valued activities, my last step will be how do I reduce or eliminate the non-value added activity. So elimination will make the processes simpler. Elimination will reduce the effort. When effort goes down and processes are made simpler, the margins tend to increase. Right? So when I apply a quarter's value chain, the impact is that I will be able to influence the margin that I have for any organization. Now let's understand with a couple of examples in terms of how do I implement these three steps to increase or influence my margin. Now I've taken two examples here. The first is from a primary activity and the second example we'll talk about from a support activity. Now every company which is manufacturing goods will have a normal production process. Now this normal production process could be labor intensive, could be capital intensive. For sake of understanding, let's assume that it is capital intensive. A lot is being manufactured through machines and people are operating those machines. Now if I introduce the JIT technology which is just in time into my production process, when the number of stages through which a particular raw material needs to go through might be reduced and because of the improved workflow, the improved flow of operation within the process, there will be a reduction in the effort that is required to produce a good. So my normal capital intensive product production Enhanced through GIT will help me identify these non-valued activities and implementation of GIT will help you reduce them or maybe eliminate them as well. Now let's look at a second example which is primarily towards the support activity side. Now we all know that for any organization people are the most important asset. Now human resources team continues to hire people and they hire people through different ways. So they hire people through consultants, they hire people through an internal reference scheme. Now let's say Let's understand the external hiring. Now when they go for an external hiring, they give the job description to the consultant. The consultant goes, looks for people, filters, sends it to you, you apply your own filter and finally through a selection and interview process, the person joins the organization. Now whenever we go for an external hiring, we have to pay a hiring cost which is in the form of commission to our consultants. Now let's say that one employee is hired and his monthly salary is about a lakh rupees in INR and there is a 10% commission that needs to be paid to the consultant. So what it means for every employee that I hire with a salary of 1 lakh rupees, 10,000 additional cost I will have to incur to pay the consultant for helping me hire the particular employee. Now let's say 80% of your current hiring by the HR team happens through external consultants. So this is a process, it is working well, the company should have no issues about it. Now when I start introducing the quotas value chain, and when I do the three steps for the HR process, I say that, okay, why do I hire 80% of my employees through consultants? Can I increase the employees hired through the internal reference schemes? Now, the amount of referral bonus that companies pay to employees for helping them hire employees for their organization is relatively less as compared to the consultant commission that the organization has to pay. Now let's say for every hiring done through a reference scheme, the commission that needs to be paid to the employee or the referral bonus is about 5,000 rupees. 
and hypothetically let's assume that for every external hiring i pay a commission of 10000 so the moment i start increasing my internal reference scheme hiring i am able to save 5000 as cost per employee as part of my hiring cost now if i hire 100 employees during the year 100 multiplied by 5000 5, is 5 lakh rupees now 5 lakh rupees comes out of my cost in the profit and loss statement now that cost coming out of my profit and loss statement will help me increase my margins and help me increase my profitability so these are ways in which companies apply quotas value chain in these three steps developing an understanding identifying non-valued activities and reducing and eliminating the non-valued activities now i will introduce another complexity till now we were talking of each of these processes individually so every process will have non-value activities. Once they identify and eliminate, they will be able to reduce cost. Now let's look at a scenario where there is a correlation of non-value activity between two steps of any particular process. So let's say I'm manufacturing goods and I'm not manufacturing goods of an appropriate quality. Now what happens when you manufacture such goods, maybe the marketing team will be able to sell those goods. After they sell, if the product breaks down, then you will have to provide after sales service to the customer. Now, after sales service to the customer also requires or incurs cost. Now, what can I do if I improve the quality of products manufactured at the level of operations? If I enhance the quality, the number of products breaking down after being sold to the customer will reduce. When this reduction is achieved, it will also ensure that my total after sales service cost also goes down. Now when this cost goes down, again it will help me influence my margin. So we looked at two scenarios within the sub-elements and across the sub-elements to be apply Porter's value chain. Now once the company adopts Porter's value chain, now keep in mind this is ongoing. Efficiency can always be improved. There is no point when you reach a particular efficiency level and thereafter you say that okay, nothing beyond this particular point. So PVC can be applied on an ongoing basis. Now, once we apply the PVC, what is the benefit we derive? One, we reduce the non-valued activities, so that reduces the number of activities. Second, we improve the efficiency. Third, when we improve efficiency and remove NVAs, we are able to reduce cost and increase margins. So, this is how a company makes use of Porter's value 